Hey, and Mark, how you guys doing? Hey, Julian. Hey. Good to see you. Hey, thanks for the time. Uh, I enjoyed your your film. Uh, very entertaining. So I want to start from the beginning and then move to more think serious questions about the future of AI and whether we're all going to die. So <laughs> that's what's coming. <laughs> so uh, let's start from the beginning, right? I mean, you guys have been, you know, bloodied and soiled in the Witcher films, and now you're going to the English countryside, right? Talk about working with Spencer on this film and how you got cast on Tim, both of you, please. Um, well, I got a call. I was actually, this was in a break from shooting uh, The Witcher, and there was I had a little bit of time, and I got a call saying that this was happening, and I read the script, and I loved it, and I thought it was such a great opportunity to sort of get into a different world and to play someone that I, or something that I never thought I would get to play. Um, and it scared the shit out of me, but uh, those, the, the challenge of it was sort of exactly what I wanted to do. And, and that's why I said yes. And when I also knew that Georgina and Mark were in it, I, those are two actors that I've always wanted to work with and I love their work. So I thought we could make something cool together. Bravo. Mark, what about you? Well, I think Eamon's going to agree in this one. Uh, both being a part of a TV show where you have to wear a lot of armour and swords. <laughs> I was like, hey, anything with normal clothes, man. Anything with normal clothes. Two minutes. Uh, it took me to get ready. Two minutes. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but look, look the, the, the story's really interesting and engaging. And I've always been fascinated with AI, technology, and where we're going in the world with it. Um, so we ended up reading the script, which was was great because it just went so fast um, and it was genuinely enjoyable to read. Um, I was like, oh, man, I really want to be a part of this. And luckily, hey, I made a good friend of it, friend out of it as well. So there we go. Oh, that's good it's stuff, mate. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not meaning you. <laughs> <laughs> actually that, that's where i was going with my next question you know let's talk about georgina because i first saw her blow up the screen in barbarian she was amazing and she's kind of the the focal point of both your love in this movie as the husband as you know as the ai robot talk about working with her specifically because from what spencer was saying you guys were in tight confines in that house and you only had like what three or four weeks to do the filming what was that like uh, what, here, give me three words, Eamon. What, what three words would you use? To describe Georgina? I said, well, is it Georgina and uh, the making, I suppose? But Georgina's fantastic. Uh, Georgina is amazing. Like, she makes it very easy to fall in love with. But also, I just think she's got such a natural... The camera loves her. She's got such such a natural way of being in story. Like, I, again, I, I saw Bavarian and... You just believe her and you're on her side from the minute you see her, I think. And I think that's so important for films like this because she's the one that we want to win. Um, and, and as well as that, if you don't mind me saying, she is so efficient because she's so good at a job. Yeah. She's really efficient. And with indies, you know yourself, you're always against the clock. So one take to her is definitely possible, which yeah. is a lifesaver for any director, you know. Totally. Um, and as Spencer said, we were stuck in like a little waiting room together. Um, and so I think the cha most challenging thing for Georgina was just like putting up with Mark and I. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> she, and yeah, that's I'll, hilarious. She, I'll give her this. She did not put headphones in. So we didn't drive her mad or too mad. Or maybe she just forgot her headphones. <laughs> <laughs> So, so Amen, let me ask you a a question about about Tim's specific mannerisms, right? Because you know we're we're aware of like you know Alexa and Siri and all these products in our life, and now we have the next evolution of the you know of the integrated manservant, and of course you know the mind goes to okay Terminator Two and some demonic robot, but that's not going to be the case. You know it's got to be clean and affable and really nice. But there's a pivotal scene in the movie where you're watching her watch a, a love story, an old classic film, and you finally see that Tim is sensing something more, that he's developing emotions. And so talk about developing your performance, because in some parts, you know, your movement is kind of robotic in a sense, because it's not as fluid as humans, but then you can see in your eyes where there's really emotions coming. So talk about that process and what Spencer wanted from that. 
Yeah, I, Spencer and I talked a lot about the physicality of him. That was the main thing that we talked about for a long time, actually, because emotionally, you know, that doesn't really exist, that realm. He's not emotional. There's no need. There's no want. It's actually just necessity. And that comes through with the physicalization. It became about what movement is necessary based on tasks um, and not, and, you know, as an actor, it's so wonderful to play characters where anything is possible and any tick or any movement can add to your character or your emotional state, but that doesn't exist for Tim. So it suddenly became about what's efficient, what's necessary. And then I'm glad you mentioned that scene because that's one of my favorite scenes. What went along, I think, in the conversation about his evolution as a, a, a learning being is encountering a film about love uh, and forcing, I mean, Tim's very open, he's data learning and he's analyzing all the time. And so I think he encounters, what we see in that scene is him encountering something he doesn't understand, something that is human emotion that he can't access and yet seems like utopia as far as like, you know, a feeling person can reach, you know, love is supposed to be hopefully a feeling that we all understand and is probably some of the best of our feelings. And so the duality of only being efficient and necessary and yet learning about the bigger things in the world that maybe he can't attain actually, there's a sadness in that. And I think Tim's sadness, or maybe sadness is not the word, What it? because that's an emotion that Tim, I don't think can feel, but whatever data leads him to think there's a hole in his experience. I think that's what drives him to sort of, to destroy what he can't have maybe. And I think that's what- That's an interesting answer. The interest- All right, so, oh, sorry. I don't mean to cut you off. I, I no, definitely no, no, no. want to ask you both this question, you know, before uh, Michelle pulls me away. So, so, so Mark, Amen, right? When I saw this film, I had literally read an article about a Tesla robotic arm that had met a function and like attacked the engineer that was working with it, right? Seriously injuring the guy, right? And so, you know, Spencer, the director, doesn't believe in the idea of the singularity. He doesn't believe that a machine will ever, you know, create consciousness. And you have two ways of thought, you know, it's going to be fucking Terminator and kill us all. Or maybe it's going to be something that, you know, benefits humankind, cures cancer, all that stuff. So, so I'm curious, you know, you know, Tim represents what is going to happen. These robots will be in our house. Hopefully they won't be malevolent and trying to kill us. But do you both think that the singularity, this idea of like AI achieving consciousness will be a bad thing or a good thing? What are your thoughts on that? I think it depends who controls Mark? Yeah, it depends who controls it, isn't it? As long as you have government bodies that are democratic um, and you trust them, the populace trust them with this power, then you're completely fine. Because there has to be an overseer, you know? There really does. I mean, we've welcomed it. We've welcomed in many years ago the electric hoover that just hovers about in the background. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> like, who knows if Google have put microchips in that? <laughs> it's, it doesn't make any noise when it hoovers, yes. So, so they can listen in. <laughs> um, but yeah, just I suppose it just depends who controls the technology up top. And, I, and if, it's, if it's a, a democratic society and there are decent people in charge, then I'm sure... You know, we can progress as as humans in a, in a, in a good way, you know. Even what do you, do you think, think, Eamon? I tend to agree with Spencer, although I think obviously there's room and space and a, a need for the incredible things that AI can offer us in different spaces, medical, technology, all that sort of stuff. But when it comes to like a, a robot eyeing up your wife and you know like being sassy to you and then killing you in the backyard oh i shouldn't say that whatever um getting revenge on you i i i tend to believe in humanity and i i think i think i believe in the humanness of it all more so than the the wily learning of a data but i might be wrong i don't know you know what's in the 90s man i'm struggling like i don't know how to keep up already you said something about killing right so imagine, so humans have the capability to, you know, cause pain or inflict pain. But what if you did have technology that just, it wouldn't allow um, 
a machine or whatever to kill someone or harm someone. I know who you're saying about the Tesla arm, but if you could control that, that's fascinating. Because then could you construct a machine that is more moral, morally sound than humans? That would be interesting. I suppose we do explore that a little bit in the movie, but could you perfect that? I don't know. Elon, that's over to Elon. Uh, <laughs> I got my, my opinions on Elon. So I, I guess my <laughs> last question before Michelle pulls me away. <laughs> yes, uh, e e Elon's in the Hoover watching you as you speak. That's what I think. But uh, my, 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 my last question, you know, let's go back to the movie. It's a silly question, but I just love the response. You know, what's, what's the best day and worst day for you both acting on Tim? I'll go first. My best day was Drowning Mark, and my worst day, uh, God, I, I, the worst day. Um, you know, this was a tough shoot. Everyone was up against it, and so those there were a couple of them, but and everyone was working so hard. But those worst days where I just want one more take on a scene, but we have to wrap. That's always the worst day, and it was on this one too. But that's on everything, you know. Um, but the, the schedule allowed for some sort of energy with it. So I guess you've got to take the good with the bad. Um, Bravo, Mark. When we, when we were getting to the end of the movie and we were like, oh my God, we're actually going to finish it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, wow, this is crazy. We've managed, because like all indie movies, it's really hard, isn't it? Because the schedule's so tight. Some days you're looking at it, you're like, oh my God, we've got so much to shoot today. But when we're getting to the end, we're like, oh my God, we've got this. We've done it. A real good team effort. And I remember us doing a scene in the garden. And one of the scenes that doesn't make it into it, but I was just playing golf. And that was great. <laughs> Outside, summertime, absolutely delightful. I even think we even got an ice cream truck that day. I mean, wow. And uh, the worst day... Um, I don't know if there was a really bad one, but you know what? I know it's cliche, but the cast were so good. Yourself and Georgina were just so fun to work with. Even when there was stress, uh, it was fine. You, would, it was absolutely fine. Maybe a day that the toast was burnt. There we go. I'm sure there's a day we went for breakfast and the toast was burnt. So, Terrible day. The worst day. <laughs> the worst day. <laughs> Bravo. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. I enjoyed your performances and look forward to speaking to you next. Thank you All so right. much. You take care.